Hey, this is Kev. Let's make a blender terrain in the shape of a canyon in a quick and dirty previous style, but not too quick. This one is going to take a bit longer, but you'll get more out of it. Let's just go. First, make a grid object and give it a subdivision of about 40 on both the X and the Y axes. Then, go over to the Modifiers tab and give it a subdivision surface modifier. Change that setting to Simple. Now, let's grab an image to use as a canyon. Go to terrain.party on the web and you'll see a huge map of the world. Somewhere north of the wall, you'll see a little blue square. Move that square to the American Southwest. I chose the Grand Canyon because it's like a canyon and would work here. Make the size like 60 kilometers on the right side plus icon. Then hit the cloud with the arrow button and name your file. Now wait and wait. Oh man, this is so much longer than a minute. You may need to bounce and get your next dopamine hit. Oh wow, no, never mind. Here it is. Open it up after virus scanning it and look for the image that says merged. That's the only one worth anything according to the readme file. And the readme file knows all, so we abide. Next, back to Blender. Add a displace modifier and load in the image that the readme file told us about. And bam! An awesome canyon. It's perfect. No. No, it's not. It has walls. What the hell? Okay, let's get rid of those. Here's how. Go into the UV editing workspace up top and select the whole left side UVs. Press S and scale them down just a wee bit. Don't go too far. Just a bit. Now go back to layout and ooh, ah, it is nice. I like. Now make the thing look more respectable by lowering the strength of the displace modifier a bit. It was way too high, like my neighbors at 7 a.m. There, that's better. Now hit zero and go into camera view. Then drag up a new window and change it to shading. Select the canyon and hit new to assign a new principled shader to it. Now let's hit some EV settings. Ready? Turn on ambient occlusion, not ambient, that darkens the crevasse. Next it's bloom, screen space reflections, and turn off half res trace. Check refraction here as well. We want motion blur, volumetrics, tile size to about two pixels, and volumetric shadows. You can choose to enable high bit depth and soft shadows if you want to. Now let's add in a world. Change the node space from object to world. Select the background node and hit Control T. If this doesn't work, enable the node wrangler add-on in preferences, then come back and hit Control T. Now I loaded in an HDRI image that I got from HDRI Haven. It's called Lakes. I need to donate to that guy's Patreon. Thanks for reminding me. Next, change the Z rotation to a nice lighting angle. In this case, it's negative 83.6 and scale the Z down to about 0.6. This makes the lighting look a little bit better in my humble but accurate opinion. All right, here's the part of the video where we're gonna slow down a little bit because I, I wanna show you what I'm doing and I tried doing this really fast before and, and cruising and it didn't really work very well and I watched the video that I edited and I'm like, there's no way anybody's gonna get this. So here's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna add a bump to the rock to make it look bumpy. So for that, I'm simply just gonna add in a noise texture. So I'll just add texture, noise. And I'm gonna put a bump node in here. Vector, bump, all right, normal to normal. And you take factor to height, all right? Now, if I have Node Wrangler installed, like I said before, I just hit Control T over here and it calls in this mapping. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change object to vector and maybe put this on texture, that's cool, right? So here we have the basic setup of our rockiness. And if I take the detail up, that's where the magic happens. And you see it starts looking really rocky. But that scale, I mean, it looks like we're shooting a macro shot here or something. So we want to take that scale down and just kind of like make it a little bit, just something like that. Now here's where it starts getting a little bit crazy, but don't worry, like you, you can totally follow along with this. So I'm going to duplicate this noise texture and then I'm going to add it to something else in here. So watch this, right? I just duplicate this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a math node. Okay, I know, scary math. Well, some of you love math, so that's kind of, that's totally cool. But this is just on the add feature. And all it's going to do is it's going to take these two values, these two noise textures, and add them together. And I'll probably end up multiplying them together. But for now, we're going to add these two together. And I'm going to move this guy back. Over here, I'll take the vector into vector. Now, here's where the, the fun happens. Because we're adding these two things together, like if I start messing with one, it's just going to kind of add it to the other. Similarly, like if I multiply it, it'll just be multiplying both of these together. And maybe I'll just leave it at that for now. And here's where the magic happens, okay? I'm gonna hit Shift A, and I'm gonna call in a separate XYZ node, drop that 
on top of this, and let me let me scale this up so you can see half and half here. And I'm just going to be concerned about the z vector. And what that does is it's going to start giving us this stratification. Okay, we want that. This is a canyon, and if you've like looked at pictures, it's kind of stratified, which means you know sedimentary rock and all that. And I'm sure like geologists will come on here and completely uh, tell me even more info than I ever wanted to know, which is totally cool. I welcome that, so go ahead and do it. So this gives us that stratification. Now we're going to start breaking it up a little bit. So we can control this by adding in a color ramp here. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw in a color ramp, throw that right down here, and we can play with the values, and we can start really kind of telling it almost exactly where we want it. Because we're on the Z, we're telling it we don't really want it in certain places like down here, and we want it more like kind of up on the rocks. Okay, and you can see that our stratification now is is kind of we're we're placing it where we want it, and you really can play around with this. And if you look at you know photos of the you know canyons and things, you can really just kind of get an idea. It's kind of Bob Rossing it a little bit here, except you know I'm nowhere near as good as that dude was. So here we go, right? That's kind of cool. And to get further with this, let's just take this out of here, and I'll show you an even cooler way to do this. So let's connect this. And now I'm going to add another multiply before this, and then I'm going to add in all of this stuff down here. And this is going to give us even more control. So you just saw what it did. Now we're going to add in even more controls. We're going to take this out, okay? And I'm just going to add in another multiply. So I can just select it and hit Shift D and move it and put it here. And then here, here's where I'm going to do the color ramp thing. So I'm going to put color into value. And it, the color doesn't really, it's not meant to go to value. So you probably want to go ahead and uh, go, just go to Converter and go RGB to black and white and just throw that in there. And like that's, that's fine. And now what I can do is I can add another setup down here that's going to control this more. And I'll show you that in a minute here. So I'm going to take this vector here and I'm going to plug it into the factor. And then I'm going to operate over here a little bit. So let me like condense this down. And you don't really see much happening right now, but just give it a second. All right, I'm going to steal this separate XYZ node, throw that on here, and I can plug that in. And then I can add an add in node here and give it a little more control. So I'll just add a math node in here. And now I have a little bit more control and you see it brings the stratification back. And you can, you can play with this a little bit. And further refine it. It just gives you an added layer of control. So we're breaking this all up. And we can go ahead and like play with the scale numbers here a little bit more and break it up. And then we can always go to the strength here of the bump and we can turn that down. And it looks like we're a little bit further away now. So you guys can have fun with this. You can play with it and, and really go to town. Okay, so lastly here what we're going to do is we're going to throw in a color ramp and we're going to change the color of this a bit just to vary it up. So I'm just going to go in, throw in a color ramp right here. And I'll take this color, first thing I can do is I can delete one of these, like I can select the black and hit delete. And then I can drag this, a lot of people don't know this, or I don't know, some of you do, but I always get comments when I do this. So you can drag this into here, and then you're already starting off with the color that we want, right? And then you can just add in another one right there and just kind of drop the value and just get something that's a little bit different, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and plug color into base color. And you'll see that we're, we're starting to get, starting to see darkness. So at the very beginning here, at the bottom, all right, we can go ahead on, on the left side and we'll throw in like a green. And when we pull in the controls here, you're going to see we're putting the green, kind of greenish down here near where the water is going to go. And then up here, it'll be like cool. So for this, I'm just going to hit color ramp, hit control T for the mapping. And I'm just going to get rid of this image texture, vector to factor. And then here, I'm just going to add a Z. So I can just even steal it from down here. So I can just go here, separate X, Y, Z, shift D, pull it up here, drop it on top. And I don't want it on the X. I actually do want it on the Z. And now, if I put this green all the way here, and I start kind of bringing this guy in a little bit, and this guy in, all right, and I change this from object to vector, and throw on texture, you can see we're getting the green down here where we want it. And up here we have more of this uh, rocky, you know, deserty sand color. So this green is obviously like way too saturated. So I can take this down. Right, and kind of just play with it. And then if you move these, right, you can enhance where that green is. So you can kind of make it a little more green down there. And that's probably pretty cool. So 
from here, we're just gonna we're gonna go back to the rest of the video. But I really wanted to take my time here and show you what I was doing because, like I said, going going really fast through here, it just it was just too crazy. So at the at the uh, you know, at the risk of losing some viewers or whatever, like for those who want to know how to set this up, that's how I did it. So feel free to follow along and play around with this, and you can get some really cool results. Now add water by calling in a plane. Set the size to like 40 or something, and bring it up just a bit on the Z axis. Now you have water. Give it a shader and make it black with some very slight roughness. There, now we have a reflective river just ripe for some pollution. It's environment time. Go back to world from object in the node place and add in a principled volume. Plug that into the volume of the world out and turn the density to zero and emission to 0.1 with a light blue color. Sit back and watch as your scene now has some depth. Add in some ant landscapes, which I hope you have enabled in the add-ons because it's awesome. Add in a canyon. Give this the same shader as the other one and duplicate and move these around the background to fill in the scene. They don't need much detail, so a lower resolution works fine for these. Now tweak a few things and you're almost done. You can add in a sunlight and just match it to come from where the sun in the HDR is to add some kick. Look, it works in EV2 once you take the emission in the principal volume down and hide the sunlight. Set your camera and give it a render. Look at that. We can obviously keep tweaking this and make the scene scale better, the rocks more varied, add some pebbles and shrubbery, and really push this thing. But I'm already way over the one minute mandate for Blender tutorials already, and more than half of you are probably gone. But for those of you who are still here, congratulations! I hope you got something out of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again, and go be excellent to each other. Party on!